Hi everyone, it's Charles from Leda. Today I'm going to give you a quick guided tour of the Leda ADE, or Agent Development Environment. The ADE is a visual development environment meant to make it easy to design and debug your agents. Okay, so if you go to app.leda.com and you don't have a server running, this is what you're going to see. So basically, app.leda.com is asking you, please start your local server. And once you start your local server, then you'll be able to access and create agents on it. So in my case, I already have Docker installed on my own machine. So all I need to do to start the Leda server is run Docker run. Um, I'm going to pass in my OpenAI key. I'm also going to pass in my Anthropic API key so that I can use both OpenAI and Anthropic models on the Leda server. And then lastly, I just need to specify the image. The image for this is Leda slash Leda colon latest. So let's actually run this command to start the server. All right, so we can see the server successfully started. And now if we tap back to app.leta.com, we can see that we now have the option to both view agents on the server and create agents on the server. You can also connect the ADE to remote servers. So for example, if you're running a Leta server on railway, AWS, GCP, for example, you just need to provide the server URL and the server password if you created it. And then you'll have additional Leta servers that you can create and access agents on. In the future, there'll be easier ways to run the ADE completely locally for those users that don't care about remote deployments and just want to run everything locally on their own device. If that's something you're interested in, definitely stay tuned for updates on our Discord. Okay, so let's create an agent and I'll walk you through the basic parts of the ADE. All right, so on the left-hand side, we have the basic agent settings, such as the agent name, which you can edit, the model, which you can change depending on what providers you enabled. You also have the system instructions for your agent here. So next in the bottom left, we have the tool section. So this includes all the core Leta tools. So things that are for memory management, such as core memory append, core memory replace, the archival memory functions, as well as send message. You can also create custom tools. So if we press plus, we'll open the tool explorer. You can see there's over 7,000 pre-made tools which you can use, but also we have custom tools that I've created myself. You can always create a new tool if you go to this rule D20 tool, for example, it's a very simple tool that basically imports random and does random ran int to simulate the rule of a die. You can actually open the tool editor. So the tool editor allows you to live edit code inside of this viewer and actually run the code as well. So if you run this code for the rule D20, it's a random function. So if you run it once and then run it again, you can see that it has a different result. We'll actually have an entirely separate video diving deep into the tool editor functionalities for the ADE. Next, we have sources or data sources. So these are basically files that you can upload to the Lettuce server and then attach to your agent. So the basic way you would do that is you would either attach an existing data source or create a new data source. If you create a new data source, you can then upload files to that data source. When you upload the files to the data source and the data source is attached to an agent, those files will get chunked and those chunks will appear inside of the archival memory. So the archival memory is not in the agent's context window, but it's always available to the agent through the tool archival memory search. Next, we have the context window viewer. So this is going to show you the complete breakdown of what is in the context window of your agent. So you can see we have, a, in this case, about 1,000 tokens of system instructions, about 600 tokens of tool descriptions. We have an external summary. So this is actually a summary of all the data that is not in the core mem or not in the in context memory, but is out of context. So for example, archival memory, data sources. We have about 300 tokens of core memory, which I'll get to next. And we also have about 180 tokens here of messages. So that makes sense because we just started this brand new fresh agent. It only has one message in the message buffer. Um, so yeah, only around 180 tokens. And you'll notice that the context window also has a limit here. So in this case, it's 16K. This is basically the limit of the underlying LM that you're using. So if you were to go into the model viewer and select something like Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, Cloud 3.5 Sonnet under the hood technically supports up to 200K tokens. So we can see that the context window now has a maximum uh, token amount of 200K. So even though we have 200K tokens to work with, there are many cases where you might actually want to set the limit artificially lower. Right? I mean, 200k tokens, it can be extremely expensive, it can be extremely slow. It can also be a lot of distractor tokens for the agent, so it might actually reduce performance. So even though we have 200k tokens as a limit here, Leta actually allows you to artificially constrain the limit. So if we go to the limit, we can actually update it to be 20k instead of 200k. And now Leta will never let the context window of the agent exceed 20k tokens. 
Next, we have core memory. So core memory is divided into blocks of memory, and these blocks are editable by the agent itself. Right? So these blocks, they always persist in the context window. You are guaranteed whenever your agent is run that this information in core memory will always be in the context window. This information or these blocks of memory are editable through the functions core memory append and core memory replace. So in this example, we have two different core memory blocks. We have one block for the human, one block for the persona. You can add and remove blocks arbitrarily. You can set their limits as well. In this case, we set the limit to 5,000 characters. So the agent basically can decide if it learns over time new facts about the human or new facts about the persona. So it basically learns new things about itself. It can edit these blocks through these tools. Of course, you can also edit the blocks yourself. So if you wanted to, you can directly edit this block, just delete it or just delete parts of it. And this immediately is reflected in the state of the agent. Next, we have archival memory. So this is basically an infinite data source for the agent to use. It's infinite because it's stored out of context, so it's effectively unlimited tokens. And this is basically a place where the agent can freely read and write to um, without any sort of like context window limits. However, this information is not actually ever going to be inside of the context window unless it is manually pulled in through a tool call. Lastly, in the middle here, we have effectively the chat area. So we call this the agent simulator. There are three different modes you can use. The main mode we recommend developers work in is interactive mode. So this will show all reasoning steps, all tool calls, as well as the actual messages that are being sent from the agent to the user. There's also something we call simple mode, and simple mode is a way for you as the developer to see what the end user would see if you did not include reasoning steps or tool calls. So for example, if you send a message like, hi, hello, you can see that the agent both has reasoning and then it actually sends a message. So if you go to simple mode, you won't see any reasoning or tool calls, you'll just see the message itself. So this is more similar to what, for example, an end user chat application powered by the Leta API might see. All right, so now I'll try walking you through an end-to-end -end example of creating an agent that actually uses all the different components of the ADE. It uses custom tools, uses data sources, archival memory, and core memory. All right, so let's start by creating an agent and we can just choose the start from scratch option. All right, so in this example, I use GPT-4 Mini. It's pretty good at function calling, extremely cheap, pretty fast. All right, so let's start with the core memory. For the persona, I'm actually using one of the prompts in the starter kits. It's a pretty basic kind of like AI companion sci-fi persona. For the human block, I'm gonna just add some information about myself. My name is Charles, some information about what I was doing before and what I'm doing now. I'm also gonna add a hint here that I'm gonna be uploading a dream diary to archival memory. Now let's actually add that data source, the dream diary to archival memory. So I've created this file here called dreamdiary.txt. It's basically a fake dream diary generated with Claude that just describes my dreams every single night for a handful of days. So I'm actually gonna upload this file as a data source to the agent, and then I'm gonna ask the agent to call a tool, actually an image generation tool, to describe the dreams that I'm having. All right, so to actually upload this file, the dreamsdiary.txt to the agent, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a data source. In this case, I can just create a new data source the data source gets a random name. If we wanted, we could rename this data source to be something more relevant, like diary data source. Then I can click on the data source and I can click upload file. Here, I'm gonna choose my dream diary file. Once I've selected the file, I can hit upload. And what this is doing is it's sending the file to the server. The server is then chunking this file and you can see it basically chunked the file into four pieces and embedded each chunk. Um, so the entire file basically became four chunks that are in a data source. And this data source, because it's attached to the agent, is visible through archival memory. So archival memory now has four entries that came from the dreamdiary.txt file that I uploaded to the server. All right, so the next part here is adding a custom tool. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna add this custom tool called create image. So this tool is basically going to call an image generation API, specifically the FAL API, and it's going to generate an image with the API, then return the result as a string. So if we go to the tool editor, we can see the full source code of the tool. Basically, you can see that the tool grabs the FAL key from the environment, 
of the server. It then sends the prompt that the agent created through the FAL API to the FAL server, and then it pulls the server until the image generation request is completed. Once the image generation request is completed, we grab the URL and we return that URL to the agent. So the, the agent, as a result of the tool call, basically gets a URL for the completed image. Now, an important part about that tool is that it relied on the FAL API key being set. So if you want to set environment variables that will be visible to the tools that are running on your agent, you just need to go into the variable section of the agent simulator and add a tool variable. So in this case, we'll add a tool variable called FAL key. And now that I've added my FAL key to the tool variable section, the tool should be able to successfully run and the agent will get an image as a result of running it. And the last step here is actually, I forgot to attach a tool, so I have to go back into the tool section and click attach. And now if I go back to the agent, you can see that the tool is attached to the agent. Okay, so I've prepared a message for the agent that is gonna to try to get it to do multiple things at once. I'm, I'm gonna ask it, I want you to try an experiment for me. Make an image based off of what you know about me from my diary entries. Try to make the image artistic while staying true, true to the entry. However, I want you to choose the entry itself based off of your own interest. So basically we're asking the agent to read my diary through archival memories. So ideally calling archival memory search and then using its own persona. So what is inside of core memory to decide on which of the archival memories or which of the dreams from the archival memories it wants to create an image of. And once it decides on that, then it should call the create image tool to actually create that image. Okay, so let's see what happens when we send the message. All right, so let's actually walk through what happened here. So you can see the very first thing that agent tries to do is it thinks to itself, I need to find some interesting dream diary entries by Charles to create an artistic image. Let's see what speaks to me. So the agent calls the archival memory search tool. It seems like an error happened here. So we can see the error happened because the agent basically provided an empty query. So when you provide an empty query to archival memory search, it throws an error. So actually the agent was able to see the error and kind of recover from the error and call the tool again. So the agent then says, so it basically repeats itself. It says, okay, I need to find an intriguing dream diary entry. Let's try querying again. And this time it says, I'm gonna do a specific topic. So you can see that it actually, this time doesn't add an empty query. It adds exploration to the query and it gets back a result from the dream diary. So these are the chunks that are existing inside of archival memory. Once it gets back the results from a archival memory search, then it thinks to itself, the entry about the memory gardens really speaks to the themes of memory and the fragility of human experience. I'll create an artistic representation of this dreamscape. Let's capture the ethereal essence of memories intertwined with nature. Then the agent calls the create image tool. The agent basically decides to write this very long prompt here, um, very descriptive, but you can see it's basically talking about, you know, memory, it's talking about trees, flowers, bloom. And the tool under the hood, as we saw in the source code, it gets dispatched to FAL. It comes back with a URL. And then, and then the agent basically says, you know, I got the image back. I can't wait to share the image with Charles. This representation of the memory gardens is really gonna capture their exploration of memory beautifully. And then the agent says, here's the image inspired by your dream about the memory gardens where memory is intertwined with nature. I hope you find it as captivating as the entry itself. And it includes the image. Now, for example, if you were to go to simple mode, we'd actually see a dramatically simplified chat. Right? So in simple mode, where you're, we're only outputting the messages from the agent, we're not putting the reasoning steps or tool calls, it actually looks like only one thing happened. Right? It basically looks like the agent this is the initial starter message, but after I sent this message about trying to experiment, it looks like the agent only did one thing. Right? And the agent basically said, here's the image. Um, it seems like you know, this kind of happened all in one step. But if you look in interactive mode, it's like pretty clear that actually multiple steps happened under the hood, right? And actually one of these steps was a failed tool call where the agent kind of attempted to call a tool, had a failure, and then had to recover. And lastly, just to show you that the ADE is actually just interacting with agents that live on a server with the REST API, and you don't have to use the ADE to interact with these agents. We can actually just drop the message here, for example, that says, hey, I love this 
this image, it made me cry. And instead of sending this message in the ADE, we can actually use this command here to copy out the relevant API call that would send this message just on any application, right? So you could actually send this exact message in the ADE if you hit send. It's the same thing as sending this API call to the Lettuce server, um, to the you know, v1 agents messages.stream route. So let's try copying this message and pasting it into the terminal. All right, so I pasted the message into the terminal. We can try running this. We can see that we get a big stream back. And now if we hop back over to the ADE, we should actually see that the message got sent under the hood and is visible in the ADE. Yeah, so we can see the same message here that I was gonna send in the ADE, but instead I sent via the API, and we can see the response. And of course, the memory in Leta agents is self-editing. So if we were to tell the agent something like, actually, you know, these days I generally go by Chuck, not Charles, we'd expect that the agent will actually go and use the core memory append or core memory replace tool to edit the appropriate section of core memory. So we can see that the agent went in to call core memory replace to replace Charles with Chuck. And then it took a second step to say, got it, Chuck. I remember to call you that from now on. And if we look at the simple mode again, the simple mode is you know, much more simple. Basically, it looks like there's only a single step where the agent says, caught it, Chuck, even though under the hood, the agent actually went and edited its memory. So if we go back to the memory, we can now see that the user's name is Chuck instead of the user's name is Charles. Thank you so much for watching the AD overview video. We're really excited to see what you create with the AD. If you have any questions or feedback, we'd love to hear it in the Discord. Thanks so much for watching.